Daniel, are you ready to share again with our friends that we've been missing so much about Jesus and um, what it means to be a follower of him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Well, um, we miss everybody still. I, I know it's great that we get to be back in church for a little bit, but um, I miss being around um, all of our Harvest kids. And so um, we just want to take this time to share with you, and hopefully soon we'll be um, back together in one classroom um, and enjoying our time. Um, my name is Lena Mosley, and this is Daniel. And I have a question for Daniel today. Do you want to race? Yes! Okay, all right, you ready? Ready. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Hey, you beat me. Yes. Well, did you know, Daniel, that racing isn't something that we um, just do in our everyday life for fun or uh, for competition just to do it? Did you know that sometimes racing can mean something more? What? Yeah. Did you know that in the Bible, the Bible even talks about racing? I know, that's crazy, isn't it? Um, guess how? Do you want to take a guess as to what um, the Bible compares a race to? Can you guess? The race to the end of your life. Hey, that's a pretty good one, right? The Bible compares our life to a race, and that's what we're going to be talking about. See, today, you happen to have a faster car than I did. Your car had more power, and it went faster, and you won today. Do you know that we're all different, and that the races that we run in life are all different? Did you know that? Well, they are, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about running the race of life, and it's found in the book of Hebrews, okay? Hebrews chapter 12. So, in the book of Hebrews, it's in the New Testament. So this is after Jesus has been born, and um, after he has lived, and after he has died, and so this is all about you know, the church and how, um, how we should live. So it tells us how to run this race. Do you want to read what the Bible says? So in Hebrews 12 starts in verse 1. Therefore, therefore, science, we are surrounded, surrounded by such a great cloud of witness. Let us throw off everything that hinders uh -huh. and the sin that so easily entangles entangles and let us run with perseverance perseverance the grace marked out for us fixing our eyes on jesus the pioneer, pioneer and the perfecter perfecter of faith for the joy set before him, and he endured the cross. Endured the cross. Scorning. Scorning its shape. Shame. Shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne. Okay, and then I'm going to read the last one. It says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. There are a lot of tough words in those verses, aren't there? Yes, ma'am. So the first one that I want to ask you about is, it says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Okay? What is a witness? Mm, something you do bad. No, but that's a pretty good guess because uh, you have witnesses sometimes when there's court and that kind of thing. Witnesses are people who have experienced something. They've seen something. And so we have a cloud of witnesses. And that some of those witnesses were talked about in chapter 11. People from the Bible, Daniel, like Moses and Noah, okay, Abraham, uh, Samson. There are a lot, Joseph. There are a lot of people that we know stories about from the Bible. And in chapter 11, right before chapter 12, it talks about all their faith and everything that they did 
to have faith in God and reach what God wanted them to do. They had a race to run. And so we can look to them, people in the Bible, people in our lives, who have run the race before us and are running the race of life to get wisdom and know how to do our race. And then God te it tells us that we are to throw off everything that hinders. hinders. What do you think hinders means? I know, that's pretty hard. That means something that uh, bothers us. So here's what I mean. What would happen to you if we were running a race and I put weights on your feet? What would happen to you if you were running and I put all this weight on your feet? Mad. You'd get mad, okay? What would it do to your running? Slow me down. It would slow you down. What if I jumped on your back while you were running? It'd slow me down. It'd slow you down a lot, wouldn't it? Well, and that's what the Bible's talking about here. There are things that can hinder us. And do you know what those things are? Sin. Sin. Sin are the things that can hinder us. And so we're going to do another little race here for just a second. And we're going to have a start and a finish. Okay? And so what happens sometimes in our life is we might both start the same race, right? Okay, don't put it in. We both might start a race, okay? And then all the stuff in our life is there. We've got all kinds of things in our life. Um, and our lives might look similar on the outside. But, hey, you put my laundry. But there might be, you know, differences as well, right? I may have put a little too much. We may lose them. What do you think? Um, but we're going to pretend that these oranges are like us. And we're not going to put them in the water and race just yet. But the first thing that we just talked about, about hinders, what do you think are some of those sins that can hinder us? Because our goal, according to this, is that we start our race, and then what are we supposed to do? When we start a race, we want to do what? Finish. finish yeah and so if we start our race we want to finish it well what do you think is at the finish like when you're running a race your eyes are forward you know you don't want to trip over things that are on the course you're looking for the finish line and you're pushing hard right you want to get there and for us as Christians our finish line the thing that we should be focused on is what what do you think Finish. The finish. And who do you think would represent the finish or be at the end that would be the finish? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And so that's what we need to hold on. That's what we need to be focused on. So what are some things that can take our eyes off Jesus? Sin. Sin. Can you tell me a sin that might? Um, anger. Anger. So... If I've got anger, that might keep me from doing what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes, you might not do this, Daniel, but sometimes, oh, my pen. Sometimes I worry. Okay? Sometimes, what's something that you might do sometimes that you can think of? Yell. Oh, sometimes we yell. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? All right? We worry. Do we ever tell? This, this is a sin that we might do be lies. Do we sometimes tell lies? Yes. Yes. Can I steal your phone? Uh huh. Sometimes we do, right? But all these things can hinder. So if you have sin, and we're just gonna put sin on this one, maybe. If we have sin, what does the Bible say will happen? If we have sin, what does it do to us? It hinders us and entangles us. What does it mean to entangle? It means to trip over something in your race. Yeah, yeah. Like if I entangle you and wrap you up, or if you have a vine, like when you're walking out and you get a vine wrapped around you, it entangles you. It wraps all the way around and you can fall and you can trip. And so sometimes sin, okay, different sins, they hinder us. Sin will always hinder us and keep us from getting close to God. And it hinders us in our race, too. So here's what I want us to see. Both of us have sin. Did you know that? Every person has sin. 
So let's put them in and let's see what happens at the start of our race with our sin. Oh, yeah, I put a little too much water, didn't I? Let's see what happens. Oh, we made a mess. We stay at the start. We're, we're stuck at the start. We sure are. Okay? But what does the Bible say? Let's see if we can get these out of here. I can get mine. You can get yours? Yeah, well, I put too much water. I should have slowed down on the water, shouldn't I? All right. What does the Bible say? Okay. It says, let us run with perseverance. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, okay? And it says to throw off, in the first verse, it says to throw off everything that entangles us. So... The sin went away a little bit. It did. So let's see what happens if you throw off your sin. Now, I sometimes am stubborn and don't listen to God very well. Sometimes I'm kind of... I hold on to things. Maybe um, I have, maybe somebody's hurt my feelings and sometimes I might not forgive them as quickly as I should and I hold on to that. Do you know that that keeps me from running the race that God would have me to run? And sometimes I'm afraid. Sometimes maybe God has shown me something that I'm supposed to do, but because I'm afraid, I don't let go what God has told me to let go. And when I hold on to it, what happens, do you think? You lose the race. My race doesn't get run as quickly and it doesn't get run as well. But you have pulled off the sin, the things that entangle us. So let's see how you're going to do in your race when you confess your sin and you listen to Jesus versus how I'm going to do in my race if I hold on to my sin. Let's see what happens. What happened to yours? I listened to God and that's how I won. And you won. You got to the finish. You got to the end. And you see, that's what the Bible tells us. And that's one way that we can see that the Bible is true. It says when we fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author, he's the one that started it all, and the perfecter of our faith, then what happens to us in our race? Um, it, we run faster. We run faster because we're focused on the end and focused on the prize. And then who do you think... When we get discouraged, who do you think that we should really talk to and uh, pray to when we get discouraged? Maybe when we don't want to give up our anger or we don't want to forgive or sometimes when we um, don't want to get in trouble so we tell a lie. Who should we always think about and focus on? Jesus. Jesus. Because look, this is what Jesus did for us. For the joy set before him he injured the cross. What do you think was the joy that was set out before Jesus? What do you think he might have been seeing that would have made him go to the cross? Sin. Well, he did see sin because it separated us, but would sin be joyful, or what do you think might be something that was joyful that Jesus would have seen? Um, you. Yeah, you and me and those that he loved that were separated. And so even though it was shameful and even though... It was a tough journey. Jesus did that so that we could be in heaven with him. And so the Bible, the last thing that it tells us in running our race is that we need to think about Jesus. When we get discouraged and we get caught up in our sin, we need to think about what he did for us. He died on the cross for our sins so that we could be with him, even though it was a really hard thing um, on his body. But he did it because he loved us. And so when we think about him, what does it tell us about our race? That we will what? We will run and what? Grow weary. Not grow weary. And lose heart. heart. So that means we'll be able to keep going on this race of life because Jesus has given us that. And every time that we're struggling, we need to think about who Jesus is and how much he loves us and how much he wants to be with us because he can help us get past the start line to the finish line and have the life that he intended for us to have. Okay? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And remember to run the race with Jesus. Remember that 
uh, when we throw off the things that bother us and we talk to Jesus, then uh, we can finish the race strong, right? Right. Yeah.